Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back to the Turn Your Passion into Profit five day, five day challenge for modern horse professionals. I wanted to um, kind of apologize for yesterday's uh, mix up. Hopefully you got my uh, Facebook message about it. Yeah, I, I did a great 45 minute presentation right on the dot, started at noon, finished at 12.45. It was great right up until I went to hit the end broadcast button up on the corner of my screen, and it said go live. I was like, oh, no. So, yeah, messed up. First day, day one, but did it again. It's recorded. I think it turned out pretty good. So I hope to get a chance to uh, see the recording if you didn't get to see it live. Um so let's kind of get going with today. So today, we're going to be talking about a couple a uh, couple different things. Um, first, we're going to have a quick overview of uh, where we are in the challenge. We're going to talk about time quite a bit today and uh, how you can categorize your time, time wasting things. We're also going to be talking about a horse I like to call the break-even sale horse. And these are the ones that no one wants to have a break-even sale horse. Then we're, then we're going to shift gears and go into artificial intelligence. This is going to be kind of fun. We're going to talk about high level, you know, kind of the overall effects on uh, us and in the world. And we're going to talk about, I'm going to bring up chat GPT. We're going to play around with that, which should be fun. And then we're going to figure out some things that we can use for, uh, make it practical for you guys, for horse owners and horse professionals. So let's move along. So here's where we are today. We're on Tuesday, day two. Yesterday, we talked about marketing essentials for the horse professional. So the main topic we covered yesterday was your ideal client or your ideal customer and on also your niche and then drilling down even further into a micro niche. And hopefully you took a look at the homework and you jotted some of these things down and you thought about some things that you might be able to put into practice. So hopefully you did that. Today, like we talked about, we're going to be talking about time, how there's never enough time, and then also how you can help your horse business using artificial, uh, always want to say artificial insemination, artificial intelligence and chat GPT. Tomorrow, we're going to be going over uh, horse websites and what you can do to make your website uh, better suited for people coming in uh, to check out horses you have for sale and your services. Thursday, we're going to be doing the um, one-two punch of how Facebook and, and Instagram, social media, and your website are so strong together to help build your business. And then Friday, we're going to be talking about steps you can do moving forward, we're going to have some giveaways, and then also a special surprise. So that pretty much uh, handles where we are at today on day two. So let's talk about time for a minute. And I'd love to, hopefully it's okay, can I tell you a story? Um, this was back in, uh, let's see, December of 2019, right before uh, 2020. And uh, yeah, I talked to you a little bit yesterday about Perry Marshall. I refer to him as the Google AdWords guy. Well, you know, I've been had been following him for a number of years, and he offered a, a course called the 30 Day Reboot. And basically, it's about kind of taking over uh, all these things that that just kind of insidiously take your time, take your attention, distract you. And over those 30 days, kind of get everything reset so you can really focus on things. So I, I went ahead and, and took that course and it started on January 1st, 2020. And of course, we all know what happened, you know, March 2020 with COVID and all that. But some of the very first things that he talked about, which goes on with, with wasting time, and there's never enough time, is... Uh, Interruptions and interruptions will just kill you from a time perspective. There's been plenty of studies that said, you know, if your head's down working on something and you're interrupted, it can take you as long as 20 minutes to get back to where you were before you were interrupted to get that mind thought back. And uh, so his solution to that, and we're going to talk about this just a little bit more, is basically unsubscribe and turn off not notifications just ruthlessly. You know, you don't think about it. Think about how much spam comes into your email, for example. And I know how I am. I know how I'm sure many of you are. As soon as that little icon pops up on your uh, computer screen that there's new email coming in or a notification pops up, it's like, well, I got to go see what that is. Maybe it's important. 
Well, unfortunately, you know, if over the years you kind of subscribe to all these things, you know, kind of unintentionally, and then all this stuff just starts coming in and coming in and coming in. And even if you're setting it off to spam, you know, you're going to go look at that spam folder every now and then. And it's just a horrible, horrible interruptions. So that was the very first thing I did was anything, anything that came in, I was like, you know, I don't even look at this. All I'm doing is hitting delete on it anyway. What's the point? So I'd go ahead and, and hit the unsubscribe button. And of course, that little tech help here, always hover over that unsubscribe and make sure it's going to a legit URL too, because that can, you know, they, there can be spam, uh, scams along with that. But uh, unsubscribe from everything. And then as you're, you know, coming on with new things, think about if you really want them to be sending you emails daily. You know, I get, you know, anytime you sign up or purchase something, you kind of automatically put on someone's list. The next thing you know, you're getting all their emails. So unsubscribe. Also, I talked about it, turn off notifications. And something else that I will do if I'm working on something, especially if I'm programming or working on a sales letter or even bookkeeping, reconciling, whatever it may be, is I will turn off my uh, email entirely or at least shut down. I have two monitors working and I'll at least shut down that one screen entirely. So I don't see that notification that I've got an email coming in. It drives me crazy when I see that. But if I, you know, don't see it, then I won't be interrupted and go go look at it. And then, of course, there's your phone, right? I mean, think about how many notifications you get on your phone, whether it's Facebook notifications, you know, um, messenger notifications, all sorts of notifications. Every app wants to notify you, notify you of something. And then if you have sound turned on, that's even worse. So Basically, on my phone at this point, I have very, very few notifications ever turned on or they're silent. So they're not popping up all the time. So I can yeah, I can check them out when I want to check them out instead of when they want me to check them out. And then, of course, social media, you know, that's just such a rabbit hole. Uh, even today, prime example. So I was going on a, on a Facebook and I was going to put a post in, which I did. But before I did that, something else got my attention. And next thing I know, I'm I'm going down to, yeah, actually, you know what it was? It was like a classic car, you know, it was like a, I think it was a 1970 Chevelle. It's like, oh, that looks pretty cool. Clicked on that. Five minutes later, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what was I in Facebook for anyway? And uh, you got to be really careful about that. And so a big part of that is dedicating time to those things, right? So I talked about where you shut off your email, turn it off. And then, you know, say, OK, I'm going to check my email. I'm going to check it in the morning. I'm going to check it at noon, check it, you know, three in the afternoon, whatever it may be, whatever suits your schedule and and stick to that. Also, uh, same with, with social media. You know, it's so easy to get on your phone and do the just constant thumb scroll or take a few minutes during the day on Facebook. And next thing you know, you're 30 minutes in or Instagram, you're 30 minutes into it. Uh, so the key to that is to dedicate time to those types of activities. And, you know, this is something that he recommended and I never did it, but everybody always says it's a great thing to do is just for a week, track how much time you are, you do everything, whatever you're doing. You know, for me, it might be working on a website or a sales letter, or Facebook post, or, you know, like a banking, you know, accounting, whatever it may be, uh, working client issues. And then see how much time you're actually spending on all these activities. And I'm sure you're going to be very surprised about this. And the big, the big reason why I wanted to talk about time during this horse professional um, challenge is um, earlier this year, I put, it, put out a um, survey and I posted it in a bunch of various uh, horse uh, groups on Facebook. You know, whether it was selling horses, showing horses, all probably about a, a dozen of them. And it was just a, it was a real quick Google survey kind of a thing. And the main question was, what do you struggle with mostly on a day to day schedule, you know, day to day time? What's your biggest struggle? And the, the number one, I tallied them up and there was all sorts of responses on there. But without question, number one that came out was not enough time in the day. So that really got me thinking about what I've learned in the past and how I might be able to help you, you know, figure out a way to get a little bit more time in your day. And something that might help with that, too, is kind of thinking about what your time is truly worth. You know, if you think about what your time is worth, 
So, you know, when we're programming or building forms or something, we just bill at a hundred bucks an hour. And the thing about a hundred bucks an hour, I mean, that sounds great, but it's not really the hundred dollars. It's the value that we bring. So if we say, for example, we do a lot of entry forms for online uh, for horse associations and they can be pretty complex. And if we just look at it and say, well, we, you know, we're going to bill you at a hundred bucks an hour. And actually that's what we do. But in reality, we should not be doing that. We should be saying, OK, you know, think about the value of building this form for that club. And they're going to they're going to pay for it once. They're going to use it multiple years and, you know, we'll update it. And that won't won't be any additional fees involved. And uh, really what we should be doing is, is charging based on the value of that form, not by how long it, it takes for us to uh, build that form. So think about what your experience is worth, what your knowledge is worth in whatever business you're in. What about all the skills that you've learned over the years or the contacts, the people that you know, especially important when you're talking about horses and the horse industry, because who you know makes a huge difference in how your business is. So there's a lot to be thinking about that. And if you really want to, well, if you really want to be brave, think about how many hours in the day that you work, right? You know, horse people and just small business entrepreneurs in general probably work 10, 12 hours most days. So if you take that over the course of a month, figure out how much money you brought in, break that down to your hourly rate. Typically, you don't want to know what that number is because it's not what you want it to be. It's usually a lot lower than you think. So, um, but I'll tell you, if you do that exercise, then these other things we talked about, about wasting time, that kind of kicks in because you can be doing other things instead of doing all those time wasters and all those interruptions. So bottom line on all of that is you want to dedicate time to you and actually make that very worthwhile. And I'll give you a really good example, if I may. Another thing with the 30 day reboot, uh, Perry talked about is something called he calls it renaissance time and renaissance time is um, basically away from all electronics, you know, that kind of thing. I do it very first thing in the morning when I wake up and have coffee. And uh, he said to read something pre Gutenberg and, and Gutenberg, for those of you who don't know, is the guy who invented the printing press. This was back in the 1500s. Well, before Gutenberg. Any documents, any books, anything that 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 survived to that point, there had to be a lot of value in those, right? Because I mean, how how does a book, you know, that old survives? Because people are going to have to keep handwriting them out, and uh, and of course the Bible is a classic example, but but there's others as well, and so I think that um, I, <laughs> I think that if uh, uh, I've lost my train of thought. So I saw that check come in. Um, I think that if um, Renaissance time, I think that if uh, the Bible was, you know, good enough, I mean, everybody knows how old the Bible is, right? Well, so he suggested that's what you do. So it's like, but how do you go read the Bible? You know, just start at Genesis and go through it, you know? And, and uh, so I uh, actually got the Bible app on my phone. I have lots of great plans. I'm in that Bible app every day. And I, at one point I had a streak of over 787 days and I missed a day. But anyway, that's a different thing. So I'm in that. So I'm reading that stuff. Then the next thing he suggested to do is to journal. And so I have this. Sorry, I have this. And this is my third one. I, and so I have two others starting on January 1st, 2020. And I write in here every morning. And I, I talk about what I'm thankful for, for the day, what I'm grateful for, what's going on uh, in, in my life at that particular time. It's always interesting to go back and look. And, uh, and also business problems, because that's a really good time to think about your business and things that you could be doing differently. Uh, and, and it's a dedicated time to do that. So that's where dedicating time to yourself, I think, is very, very important. So now let's look at another way of how you can categorize your time. So basically, there are different levels of tasks and dollar amounts. So let's take $10 an hour. And I'm going to use horse, horse business as a, as a very typical example. And so basically, those are the tasks that have to get done. And, you know, cleaning stalls, grooming, uh, feeding horses, taking horses in, taking from pastures, taking them out, holding them for the farrier, holding them for the vet, whatever, all that kind of stuff. 
And these are the things that really bog us down and they're not helping us make money even a little bit. It's just kind of a maintenance thing. And so these are the things that you wanna offload absolutely as much as you possibly can. Very, very important. Don't be doing the stuff that's not making you money. And yeah, you might like clean installs because you, you might like grooming the horses, but if you can pay somebody 10 or even 15 bucks an hour to do that, while you could be doing something more, more valuable for your business, then you have to do that. $100 an hour tasks. Now, this is kind of where we all kind of live, right? These are the things that, that really that we like doing. These are the things that make us some amount of money. Um, and it's just, it, it's kind of, it's kind of like our wheelhouse. So examples, of course, are riding lessons, training horses, uh, maybe breaking colts if you're a special a specialist at that. But a lot of times you can hire other, uh, you know, less experienced trainers to at least break them for you. Uh, hauling horses around, whether it's to a vet, to, you know, somebody's uh, place to go work, sale horses, what have you, uh, putting on clinics. Um, and of course, you have your basic marketing stuff, whether it's Facebook, social media kind of things. Then, of course, there's bookkeeping and accounting and invoicing and all the scheduling and all that other kind of jazz. So all this is stuff that's important to your business and you want to make sure it gets done right. But you want to try to offload some of this as much as you as much as you can. And I do that with our business. I've done it. Uh, I try to do it as much as I can. And so some things, for example, are uh, the forms I talked about earlier. Some of those forms can get very complicated. Well, I'm able to offload that now to uh, Debbie. I, I kind of talked about Debbie the other day, yesterday, and she's fantastic at it. And she loves it. It's different than just designing websites. There's some logic involved. And um, she's great at it. So it's worked out. It's worked out very well. And that was a lot of time on my plate that I was able to let her do now or have her do now. So there's a lot of things like that that uh, I'm sure if you look at your business that you can do as well. Offload those things. Another one would be accounting. I'm horrible at that. I wanted to offload accounting, you know, the invoicing and all that. But I've yet to be able to do that. Then after the hundred dollar an hour, these are the ones that are really, really important. Thousand hour, thousand dollar an hour tasks, and nobody thinks about anything that you, that you can do is worth a thousand bucks an hour. Well, you're wrong if that's what you think. So think about this again: horse shows. You know, think about people, trainers, even non pros and amateurs who are really good. They're out there showing right, and they're increasing the value of their horses. They're winning money, depending on you know what they're showing in, and. Um, you know, they're showing off their skills and their experience. And based on just on that, being successful, being out there, they're increasing their uh, level of awareness of their business and which in turn is going to help build their business. Horse sales, very similar situation. You think about it, when you go to a horse sale and, you know, you've been in horses for years, you're able to look at a horse almost immediately. And you know whether it's confirmation, attitude, eyes, ears, how it's handling itself in that kind of situation, you know almost immediately if that's going to be a, a, a good horse or not. And then, of course, you're going to go watch them ride and be real, real uh, critical of them. But I mean, think about what that's worth. That's thousand dollars an hour. Easy right there. Then, of course, the other thing are things that other more business related things such as future planning, you know, what you're going to be doing, where you're trying to go, goal planning. Uh, your client relationships, very, very important. Kind of talked about that, you know, at the horse show uh, stuff, building those relationships, being out there, being visible. And uh, then, of course, new business ideas. You know, what else can you do in your business to try to develop it into the business that you want it to go? So all these things are things that you really need to be concentrating on. So if you're getting rid of the $10 an hour tasks, some of the $100 an hour tasks, you can concentrate on these without question, you're going to be able to build your business faster. And then the last one is the $10,000 an hour task. Now, these are the big ones. These are the big dogs. These, these are the big decisions that get you the big rewards. So, for example, changing how you're going to do your business or even where. Maybe you're going to move your location. If you're a horse trainer, right, you get lose your lease or you get kicked out. It's like, okay, where are we going to go now? That's a huge decision, right? Happens all the time. And, um, you know, they're one, they can be once in a lifetime type decisions. And these type of decisions are really should be pretty much all you, but a lot of times you need to get some help with that as well. So get that expert advice and don't be afraid to do that.
Now I have a story for you. This is another way about another way of, of time issues. So this is a story about Brad Money Pit. He's a sales horse. Here he is, a little Palomino gelding. So we bought him for 7,500 bucks. Really nice gelding. We thought we did great. You know, he's got a lot of potential. And uh, we're thinking, you know what? We're going to be able to double our money on this guy. Easy. So we're going to price him at 15000 And yeah, it's a little optimistic, but I think we're going to be okay. And it's interesting, you know, doubling your doubling your your uh, doubling your money on a horse is something that uh, we did quite a bit actually when we moved from Montana to Texas. We had this great place in uh, at, at our ranch in Texas. It was about 120 acres, had a covered arena with stalls and stuff, and so we got really big into buying and selling horses. And back then, this would have been eh, 2007, 2008, 2006, somewhere in that neighborhood. We would go to the NCHA Triple Crown sales, and we would always hang out for the riding horse days, and, and we'd try to find some bargains. Or we'd go up to Shawnee or other various sales around, and we'd buy these, these cutting horses that weren't, you know, big-time cutting horses, but very good, solid horses. And, you know, we'd get them for anywhere from $5,000 to $10,000. And then we would turn around, you know, and we'd bring them back, ride them a little bit, figure out what's what. We turn around and, and we could easily double our money almost on everything. We tripled our money on some. And we've sold them overseas. We had some, well, Venezuela back then to Sweden, um, Canada, and all over the United States. It was a great business. Well, it was a great business until the whole internet thing caught up to us, which is kind of ironic considering we're a website design company. But what would happen is we'd buy these horses at those sales and the sale companies in their infinite wisdom decided that they should be posting the prices paid and who purchased them. So we would buy a horse and we'd put it up on our website and we, and we wouldn't have a price there. But, uh, you know, so people, of course, they started figuring out Google. You know, you can, you can Google horses. So we would buy a horse for $10,000. we would have them priced at $20,000. And the people would say, well, wait a minute. You just bought that horse for $10,000, you know, a month ago. And now you're selling it for twenty. dollars What's up with that? And, you know, of course, you reason it out. It's like, well, we're the ones that took the risk on the horse. And, you know, we're backing up, the, you know, backing we're behind the horse, you know, if you don't get along, all these kinds of things. But that really put a um, put a, a damper in our in our horse selling business very, very quickly. Uh, probably within a year, uh, things really slowed down for. It. I mean, at one time we were making, making way more money buying and selling horses than we did uh, with websites. But anyway, that's uh, that's my uh, doubling your horse, uh, your your uh, doubling your money on horse story. Uh, so back to M Brad Money Pit here. So, okay, so we paid 75 for them and we're going to uh, sell them, try to sell them for 15000 Well, you know what happens? You get those horses in the barn and sometimes they move fast and sometimes they don't. So, in poor Brad's case, three months later, he's still in the barn. And you know, we kind of figure our overall expenses for a horse is around 10 or 11 bucks a day. So, that's going to be feed, hay, farrier, maybe vet. And it's kind of an overall average. So over three months, that's about $1,000. So we have, at this point, we have $1,000 in just overall expenses and 7,500 bucks that we paid for Brad. So now we got 8,500 bucks into him. But wait, there's more. Remember how we talked about your time and what, how valuable it is? Well, so say for example, you know, if you think about your time, is it worth 200 bucks an hour? Is it 100 bucks an hour, 50 bucks an hour, 20, 10? Well, let's be conservative. Let's say that you decide your time with horses is 50 bucks an hour. And over the course of a, of a month or on a daily basis, you figure out you spend about an hour a day with this guy. You know, whether it's riding him, you know, bathing him, vet, farrier, whatever it is. So about a buck a day, or a, an hour a day. So over three months, that's 4,500 bucks of your time value in this horse, in Brad. You can kind of see where this is going now, I'm sure. So after three months, here's what the numbers look like. We paid 7,500 for them. We got a thousand bucks in basic overhead over those three months, 4,500 bucks in our time. So we have a total of $13,000 expenses in Brad Money Pit after three months. Of course, we've had Brad for three months. And while he's a nice enough gelding, we got to get him out of the barn. 
So how are you going to do that? Well, we're going to have to discount them a little bit. So we finally get an offer for 12000 and we negotiate back and forth. And they come, they love him, they load him up in the trailer and write me a check for $13,000. So that's great. And the way, unfortunately, the way you think about this is that's like, all right, we got thirteen grand. Well, but you paid seventy five for them three months ago. You got a thousand bucks in uh, expenses, overall expenses for them, and then you have all of your time. So when it all comes down to it, you made zero dollars on that horse. But you don't think about it like that. You got a check in your hand for thirteen grand. And so the only way that particular situation makes sense is if your time is free. And of course, no one's time is free. So you got to get those horses moved faster as fast as you can to make the most money on them. I mean, I mean, everyone knows that. So oftentimes it's going to be way better to price them to sell rather than just to, you know, try to get the most out of them and hang on to them uh, longer. And I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir. Any, anybody that's been in the horse business certainly knows that. All right. So let's shift gears, totally shifting gears. So, Let's talk about artificial intelligence and chat GPT. So I was putting this slide together. I thought, okay, so I got to explain artificial intelligence and chat GPT. What's going to be the best way to do that? Keep it simple and straightforward to where people can understand it easily without any technical uh, jargon. So I went into chat GPT and I said, hey, chat GPT, explain AI like I'm eight years old. And this is a great way to use chat GPT. Anything that's kind of complex say, you know, explain it like I'm eight. Because bottom line is, if they can, ex if it can explain it like at eight, chances are you're gonna understand it very clearly and understandably, right? Yeah, it just kind of makes sense. So here's what, it, here's what it came back with. It said, sure thing, Tom, I have it set up that it knows who I am. Uh, artificial intelligence is like making a computer or robot think and learn almost like a human. Imagine teaching your video game characters, remember this is for an eight-year-old, to learn how to win a race or a battle on their own without you controlling them. They can get better and they can figure things out by themselves, just like when you learn to do things better with practice. That's what AI does. It helps computers learn and think all by themselves. So it's a very straightforward, easy to understand, high level definition of artificial intelligence. It's great. So then I said, okay, chat GPT. And I'm going to, if you're not familiar with chat GPT, I'm going to show it to you here in just a minute. So chat, I said, explain chat GPT like I'm eight. And he's like, you got it, Tom. It's always kind of fun. Um, he says, chat GPT is like a super smart computer, a super smart computer program that you can have a conversation with. And that's what we're going to see is you actually will have a conversation with it. It's kind of, once you get into it, it's pretty fun. <laughs> so it has read lots of books been to lots of websites and other things, so it knows lots of stuff. When you ask it a question, it thinks about all the things it's read and gives you an answer. It's like having a conversation with a really knowledgeable friend on your computer. While this is very true, one, p one thing about it is chat GPT isn't always 100% accurate. So if you're looking for something some, something very, very um, scientific or something that, that accuracy is very, very important, well, Always double check. So I just wanted to kind of throw that little disclaimer in there. Back in May, I went to a, well, it was going to be a traffic uh, seminar in Chicago, all about traffic, uh, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, you name it. And then, and then AI came on the scene, and it quickly, um, beginning of the year, it quickly became an artificial intelligence and traffic uh, summit. It was a three-day, um, it was a three-day seminar put on in Chicago by Perry Marshall, and it was it was incredible the stuff that that we learned about it. And um, nobody really knows what where it's going to go, uh, but we do know there's going to be a huge, huge impact on it. And one of the biggest things is Google is very threatened, and they're actually coming out with their own uh, AI stuff. But uh, well, I'll tell you, for me, I use uh, ChatGPT a lot more often than Google, especially on my phone, because I can ask it a specific question. And unlike Google, it's going to go through and, and give me really good answers. If I ask Google, I have to go to websites to find out the answer. I don't want to have to mess with that. It, it, it just speeds everything up. 
Now with AI, obviously some jobs are going to be eliminated. And that's kind of like with anything. If you think about it, and probably many of you aren't old enough to remember when computers came on the scene, but when computers got to be popular, especially personal computers and offices and everything, everybody's like, oh my God, so many people are going to be out of work. Well, invariably, that's exactly what happened. Lots of people lost jobs because they were replaced by other people using computers who could do things much faster. Artificial intelligence is going to be very similar to that as well. So people are, there are going to be jobs that are going to be eliminated. There's going to be lots of things that um, artificial intelligence are, will be able to do, basically once it's set up for free, that humans you know, wouldn't be able to do or as fast. And you've seen this all over the place. You think about you go to a website, you have a little chat bot down in the corner of the screen, you know, and you type in your thing and it, your question and it does its best to try to figure out what you want. And some of those are pretty lame, but some of them are really getting a lot better. And, and they're going to get do nothing but get better and better and better as they learn what people are asking. So it's, um, it's going to be very interesting to see where this all shakes out. And while there will be jobs eliminated, there's also going to be plenty of jobs that are going to be created because all these people are going to have to figure out great ways to use uh, artificial intelligence to make things better for their business, for people in general, uh, that kind of thing. So one big thing that came out of that conference was that artificial in intelligence basically accelerates time. It, it kind of compresses it. Uh, it might be an uh, easier way to think about it. So, for example, in my world, if I'm going to write a computer program for a website, for example, you know, I can sit there and, and uh, you know, do it all by hand and, and tr test it and, and it doesn't work and go back and forth, back and forth. With artificial intelligence, I can say, okay, here's what I need. I need this computer program to do this. You know, you write it all out, of course. And I need the user interface to look like that, so on and so forth. The next thing you know, it's going to spit out some code. You're going to go look at it and say, well, that's pretty good, but we need to change this, change that kind of a thing. And it, you'll have that whole process done much faster than you would have if you've done it manually. And that's just a really, really simple uh, example. Something else that came out, somebody said, everything electrified, well, they, they put it like this, everything electrified will be cognified. And cognified is kind of a weird word, but it kind of makes sense. So, and we already have that. You think about Alexa or Siri on your phones, right? You ask it a question and it comes up with whatever answers. And that's been around for a long, long time. But then you start thinking about other things, appliances. You know, appliances, well, yeah, I mean, well, shoot, there's already web browsers and refrigerator doors. You know, your washer, they've got such, you know, um, advanced washing machines now. You can put clothes in there. It's going to throw some water in it, figure out how dirty it is, let, you know, figure out what the clothes type is, work out whatever magic it needs to do, and wash your clothes for the most efficient way possible. There's all sorts of things like that. What about your car, right? I mean, any new cars, they have all sorts of electronics in there. And it's all, everything's going to be handled by artificial intelligence. So it's kind of scary in one hand, but it's kind of exciting on the other. But the key thing about this, about artificial intelligence, is that the businesses that don't count on it and the businesses that are more people oriented, those are the ones that are going to excel because being people oriented is, well, here's a good example. My brother is a financial advisor for Edward Jones. And Edward Jones, uh, you know, large money management firm. And uh, he, he explained to me how they are actually hiring more customer service reps because they want to be known as the company that when you call, you can go talk to somebody on the phone. You're not going to go through a chat bot. You're actually going to talk to a live human on the phone. So how cool is that? So they recognize that the people part is going to be the most important. So I thought that was pretty cool. So let's see. Real quick, and I have this uh, link in the homework as well. So this is where you go to get chat, uh, chat GPT if you, if you haven't played with it yet. There's two different versions. Uh, version 3.5 is free. Uh, it came out late last year. That was the main thing for quite a while until version 4.0 came out. 3.5 is great. It's fast. 
It's not as knowledgeable. I mean, it's just not as good as 4.0, which is an upgrade. And it can get a little bit confused. doesn't hold on to your conversation threads as, as fast and such. Version 4.0 does cost $20, uh, $20 a month. That came out in the spring. Much more knowledgeable. It has a longer memory for the conversation threads. Uh, it is a little slower. And the other cool thing about 4.0 is it has the ability to have plugins. And I'll show you about plugins here in a minute. Then version 5.0 is going to be coming out pretty soon from what I've read here recently. One other thing I wanted to note is that you can get chat GPT on your phone. I have it on mine and it is awesome. Like I said, because it makes it really easy to talk to it, to ask it a question. Right. And I love that. So I'll talk to it. And, and I mean, it could be anything, you know, it doesn't actually most stuff I actually talk to it about has nothing to do with business. It's like, you know, what's what temperature do I cook? You know, half a dozen chicken legs. and I want them to cook slow on a propane grill. You know, I mean, stupid stuff like that. It's awesome. Uh, anyway, when you download it, it's available for both Apple and Android phones. Be sure to get the open AI version. There's a ton of AI um, chat GPT kind of lookalikes out there. But the open AI, that's the company that built it, is the one that you want to get. So like I said, why get it on your phone? Well, I hardly use Google at all. So uh, I really prefer to use chat GPT. It's, I, I enjoy it much, much better. So. Let's talk about what uh, ChatGPT can do, and we're going to do a little demo here, so it'll be fun. Um, here's what here's the way I look at it, and some pointers. So conversations are saved. I'll show you some examples. You can ask it anything. I'm always very polite. If you're polite to ChatGPT, it'll be polite back. It's kind of fun. Um, the more detailed you are, the better the response is, and it's no different than Google search. If you remember way back when, when you first started ser searching on Google. You know, you would type in, for example, I want to see horses for sale. Well, that didn't really get you very good results because there's all sorts of horses for sale. So maybe you narrowed it down to quarter horses for sale. Well, that helped, but that didn't really help you much. But if you narrowed it down to I want two year old cutting horse, uh, quarter horse, futurity prospects for sale. Well, now you're you're digging down to it. Now you're going to get the results that you want. Chat GPT is very much the same way. How you ask it, how you ask it to give you your reply back will make a big difference. And you can do it for all sorts of stuff. Jokes, puns, riddles, recipes, general knowledge, anything, really anything. What about language translation? It really excels at this. I mean, it'll translate anything from one language to another, Chinese, Japanese, Spanish, English, whatever. It doesn't make a difference. From a business perspective, Using it for social media posts, blog posts, email messages, and those types of things, fantastic. And replies to email replies. You know, if you have an angry client, you can post it in there. This is what my this is what the client uh, sent to me. How can I reply back? I want to make this point, but I want to be nice about it or you know professional. And you know, you can say, give me five examples, and it'll pop out five examples of some ideas that you can use. I use it all the time. I've used it for, I use it for these presentations, quite frankly. The, the, uh, the ideas for it are, are just endless. Let's take a look. I'm gonna go full stream here. So here we are, ChatGPT, and when you first get to it, you have the two versions, 3.5 and then 4.0. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at uh, 4.0. And you can see down here at the bottom, it has some ideas. Uh, well, let's see. Write a text inviting my neighbors to a barbecue. Let's see what it comes up with. Write a short and sweet text message inviting my neighbor to a barbecue. So that's easy. Text message. That's pretty fun. What else could we ask it? Anybody else has any ideas? I'd love to get some ideas on what we could ask it to do. How about um, give me... 10 really funny puns. Really funny puns. I told my wife she was drawing her eyebrows too high. She looks surprised. 
actually any of you are clients of mine i also use this for my newsletter because i always have jokes or puns or riddles in there and actually that particular line i told my wife she was drawing her eyebrows too high she looks uh, surprised was one that i used what about recipes how about uh, how long do you smoke a 18 um brisket this is kind of a guy thing on a wood smoker there you go 225 you should plan on one and one and a half hours per pound so it's going to take anywhere from 18 to 27 hours and it's done i mean look at that how awesome is that then you could say it's just like well wait a minute what, else, what should i put on it and it's going to understand what you're talking about because this conversation just no different than if you're having a conversation with a friend. There you go. You didn't have to say, hey, for all oh, about that 18 pound brisket. And think about it, if you wanted to get that information out of Google, you'd end up having to go to half a dozen different websites. And there it is. There is your recipe. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So I talked about um, conversations. So here's the sidebar, and here are all the conversations. Now, this one's na uh, titled Neighborhood Barbecue Invite, because that was the very first one that I asked it to do. But uh, here you go, explaining explaining chat GPT. Uh, I started as a five-year-old. That was a little basic, so I went up to eight. Uh, let's see some various things. This was a programming thing. I had problems with, a, with a, uh, some code, and that helped me with that. It was an unbelievably fast fix. It would have taken me hours. Uh, what else? My Big Sky Betty. Remember, I, I talked about Big Sky Betty yesterday. So I copied all that in here, my Big Sky Betty letter. And I said, that's my ideal avatar. So there it is. I read this yesterday, actually. And then ChatGPT kind of wrote back and has talked about it. It's like, okay, understands what her pain points are and all these types of things. And I was like, well, that's that's great. I said, okay, I want to do a five-day challenge to help Betty. What do you suggest I do? What would be a good title? So here you go. This is what it came up with. So I use bits and pieces of this, right? Most of the time with chat GPT, it's not something you can just copy and paste and, and it's going to sound like you. Sometimes, and you can tell it to sound any way that you want. You could say, um, let's see. Um, Tell me a joke in the style of uh, King James version of the Bible. I have no idea what it's going to come up with. Let's actually, yeah, let's see what happens. And this is what I encourage you to do. Get on chat GPT and just have fun with it. So how about that? Why did the chicken cross the road? Verily, I say unto thee, to reach the other side, yea, that he might dwell in the land of plentiful grain, where the coops do overflow with comfort, and the worms wriggle in abundance. Amen. Like I said, you can do all sorts of, it, it, it's it's unimaginable, everything that you can do. I'd also talked about the, um, let me do another new chat, about the uh, plugins. So here are some plugins. And I use one called uh, WebPilot. But we can take a look at some of the others. And all these basically use chat GPT and artificial intelligence to go off and do all sorts of various things. So you can have it scan PDFs uh, for um, programming. What else we got in here? Uh, for browsers, Expedia. Here's one for the earth generates a map. Kayak, you're looking for trips. It's just incredible. So I really, really encourage you to uh, to investigate ChatGPT and learn all there is to it. And it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So let's talk about today's homework. First off, we talked about time, right? So what can you do today to reduce your time wasting? You know, we talked about unsubscribing from emails. We talked about turning off notifications. We talked about having dedicated time. Uh, to really think about your business, make dedicated time because otherwise, you know how it is. You you're you're just in your business so much 
you never work on it. You're always working in it. And so that's a that's a huge, huge point to make here. What about those $10 an hour and $100 an hour tasks? Which one of those can you offload, get them off your plate to free up your time to do more important things like those $1,000 an hour tasks, right? What business decisions can you be thinking about right now or concentrating on to help build your business? Dedicate that time to those kind of thoughts. Like I do my renaissance time every morning. A lot of times I'm not thinking about the business, but then a lot of times I totally am thinking about the business and thinking about things that I can do. Some of my journal pages are really short, maybe three, four, five sentences. Sometimes they're pages. You just go with it. Lastly, I want you to uh, create, if you haven't been on ChatGPT, go do it. It's a lot of fun. The URL for it is on the homework uh, that's already been posted in our Facebook group. And uh, just go play with it. Have fun with it. I certainly recommend you install it on your phone. Talk to it. Um, yeah, you'll have a blast. It's hilarious. It can be hilarious, as you can see, about a joke uh, written in the King James Bible style. And then lastly, think about ChatGPT once you get past the fun aspects of what you can use it for in your business, whether it's Facebook posts, uh, blog posts. Hopefully you're doing some blog posts uh, on your website. <clears throat> and, you know, a lot of times you could ask chat. Here's a great example for blog posts or Facebook posts, too, for that matter, because you can schedule those. So say you, you say you want to do a biweekly uh, or a twice a week blog. Say, OK, chat GPT, I want to do a, a twice a week blog over the next month. So that'll be eight. So create eight blog posts with these. Uh, covering these subjects, and I want a catchy headline, and I want them to be two paragraphs long. Paragraphs should not exceed three sentences each in the style. Uh, journalistic style is a great style to, to tell it to use because that makes it very easy to read. Or you can do it like an eighth grader or a tenth grader or whatever grade level you want to do, and it will sit there and pop that stuff out just like that. Then all you got to do is copy and paste it, tweak it to make it sound like you, and you're done. So you could do, you could probably do eight blog posts for your website or, or plan social media posts, probably within, oh, I don't know, an hour, maybe two, if you really want to change it to really, really sound like you. But then you can give value to your customers. We're going to talk more about this tomorrow as well. Then you get really good value to your customers or people that visit your website and visit your uh, Facebook page. And that's what's going to bring them back. So it can be anything, anything horse related. I mean, I've done stuff where I've asked it to tell me about, um, you know, old time horses. They don't even have to be that old time. For example, Doc Bar or in the Western pleasure world, you know, Zippo Pine Bar or Sunny D Bar or, you know, name it. And it'll go out there and it'll find that information for you. It's just incredible. Well, that ends today. Thank you so much for being here, and I'm very happy to see that the end broadcast button is there, and it doesn't say go online now. And uh, so go check out the homework, and also the VIP is still available. And so what do you get with the VIP? You're going to get total ac or lifetime access to the Facebook group, lifetime access to these recordings, these slides. I'll, they'll be in a PDF for your note taking. Uh, let's see, what else? You're going to get a 30-minute uh, coaching session where we can talk about anything you want to talk about, whether it's marketing, your horse business, your website, social media, what have you. And lastly, you'll have discounts and anything, any kind of offerings we have in the future. So check that out. You can go back to the website where you signed up for this. Uh, turn your profits into turn your profits into into passion. Turn your passion into profitschallenge.com. Thank you so much. We'll see you all tomorrow.